Engelbert Humperdinck is one of the most decorated international artists of all time. He sold 140 million records worldwide. 64 of them went gold and 35 went platinum. He's also been nominated for a Grammy four times with honors on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and in England. The amount of success didn't come without struggles, though. He had to overcome issues like stage fright and poor management. He also recently underwent a personal tragedy that almost threatened to derail his long and successful career. Keep watching as Engelbert Humperdinck opens up about losing his wife. Before Patricia Arnold George Dorsey was born May 2, 1936. He was one of ten children and grew up shy and reclusive. He couldn't even sing for his family without being shielded by a table or shower curtain. He was also a distracted student. He left school at age 15 to obey his father's wishes and take an apprenticeship at an engineering factory. That lasted a year. He first sang in public at a club at age 17, and he liked it. They asked him who his agent was, and he started to think about getting representation. He also kept performing at clubs. These weren't the kind of gigs he dreamed of, and there weren't any early signs of how successful he would become. His first attempt to serenade a girl went horribly awry. He turned his back on her and sang, only to turn around and find that she had run away. It was his first and only date because he went into the army at age 18. He was conscripted into the British Army Royal Corps of Signals in the 50s. He thinks that two-year experience helped bring him out of his shell. It made him tough enough to navigate the difficult world of the music business. Starting out, Engelbert's musical talent was noted after his discharge. He started performing under the name Jerry Dorsey. He had eyes on him, but it took years for him to find success. He won a talent contest and got to record in 1959 with Decca Records. His first single for them, Crazy Bells, wasn't a hit. Neither was his first record with Parlophone Records, I'll Never Fall in Love Again. He was part of a touring show called The Big Beat Show in 1959 and appeared on the ITV show The Song Parade. He also toured with Adam Faith and worked in nightclubs. A nine-month bout with tuberculosis kept him off the stage. He became healthy enough to return to showbiz in 1969, but only found gigs in variety shows and nightclubs. Finding Success He eventually found management with Tom Jones's manager, Gordon Mills. He convinced the shy singer to change his name to Engelbert Humperdinck. He put out his first two hit singles on the UK charts, The Last Waltz and Release Me, in 1967. They sold over a million copies each. He had four major hits after that, with two of them among the best-selling in the UK in the 60s. He also had hits in America with songs such as After the Lovin' and This Moment in Time. His success couldn't be limited to one type of performance either. He performed on the Beavis and Butthead Do America soundtrack and released a dance and gospel album as well. He even had a variety series called The Engelbert Humperdinck Show. In total, he sold 120 million albums from 1967 to 74. In the 80s, he was still focused on releasing albums, but became a prolific concert performer. He did over 200 a year while headlining in Vegas and appearing on shows such as The Love Boat and Fantasy Island. He has fond memories of his parents coming to watch him in his hometown of Leicester and even in Las Vegas. He got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1989, and a Golden Globe for Entertainer of the Year. He also began philanthropic efforts for age and leukemia research. They included writing a song for a charity group called Reach Out on his 1992 album. Engelbert racked up a net worth of 135 million pounds, but like many stars, had much of it taken away by management. Gordon reportedly took millions of his earnings to pay off gambling debts. He did have a positive relationship with others and was a frequent collaborator. He was friends with Elvis, Jimmy Stewart, and Edward G. Robinson. He only regrets not being able to meet his film idol, John Wayne. Finding Patricia Engelbert became known by the title of his 1973 album, King of Hearts. His lilting voice made it easy to charm women. He allegedly wore 150 shirts on tours because female fans, known as humperdinkers, would tear his clothes off if they got close enough. His true love was always Patricia Healy. They met in 1956 at the Palais de Danse nightclub in Lancaster when she was 17 and he was 20. He hadn't yet become a major name, but a lack of fame didn't matter. It was love at first sight. 
They were married in 1964. They moved from a small flat to a luxury home in Surrey with John Lennon next door. They then moved to America but kept a family home with its own pub in Leicester. Engelbert admits there were struggles in the first few years of their lives together as he tried to make a name for himself. He also believes she had a major positive influence on his career. He's proud of his family and how she raised their four children. Losing Patricia Humperdinck saw the end coming when the couple were both diagnosed with COVID-19, making it impossible for her to see medical professionals to treat her Alzheimer's. He shared a video on Instagram where he revealed that she had stopped eating and drinking. He asked for their prayers and revealed they, quote, needed a miracle for my darling wife. He tried every possible treatment for Patricia, hoping a miracle would arrive. It included everything from stem cell treatment in Germany to holy water from the Seine River. Patricia died of cardiac arrest at age 85 on February 4, 2021. Engelbert shared news of the tragedy in a Facebook post. He said their children, Louise, Jason, and Brad, were there at the Bel Air home when she died. Their other son, Scott, was present via FaceTime. He called her battle with Alzheimer's over 10 years brave from the very beginning, as they did everything they could to help her. He admitted it was difficult to discuss, but went on the UK talk show Loose Women in hopes of going public and raising awareness about the disease. He also said he would love her, quote, beyond words, forever and always. Selling his possessions Getting rid of old possessions can be a way to let go of grief. Engelbert seems to think so. He no longer wants to hold on to his 5,600-square-foot home in Bel Air, Los Angeles. He loves the views and the privacy and serenity it provides. David Kessler of Coldwell Banker Realty said he originally sold Engelbert the home, but that they're ready to move on. His children are grown, and the family is ready to find a new home in Beverly Hills. It was built in the late 90s and purchased in 2005 for $2.99 million. It recently went on the market, advertised as either a remodel or development opportunity. There's no end to the wonderful features the mansion has. It has four levels, five bedrooms, and six bathrooms. This wasn't Engelbert's first real estate venture. He's bought and sold the Pink Palace and the La Paz Hotel in Mexico, which was replaced by the Posada Hotel Beach Club. He also has strong ties to Leicestershire and auctioned off one of his motorbikes in 2005 to support its county air ambulance. They recognized his efforts with an honorary doctorate of music in 2003, an honorary Freedom of Leicester in 2009, and a plaque on the Leicester Walk of Fame. His future work The first few months after Patricia died were traumatic and heartbreaking. He admits his grief made him unable to do his job. What made it even more difficult to carry on was that it brought another traumatic experience back into his mind. He remembers a time in 1988 when he was set to go on tour. He got a call that his mother had days to live. They wouldn't put her on the phone because she was in a coma, but she heard him on the other end and came out of it. Her last words were, promise to take care of yourself, I love you. His family reminded him if anything happened to his mother, he'd have wanted her son to sing for her. Today, he's ready to start touring. The stage is where he feels most comfortable after all. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite song of Engelbert Humperdinck's? Let us know in the comments section below.